Today, year of learning by Sue and Arani Garlick in memory of Malka Pearl Mann and Philip Mann, and Yisrael David Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Beryl Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meyer Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, and Yerivka Pearl Rosner Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, and in memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Elbas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, Friends of Avi Gittler, Ava Meir Ben Shimon, and Martha Gittler China Bat Yeshaya. Friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bat Yisrael Dove. Friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim. A month of learning sponsored by Mel and Haran Haller, in memory of his brother, Yaakov Ben Avraham, by Jill and Perry Meltzer, in memory of his father, David Ben Fischel Halevi and her mother, Bela Bas Avraham, the Bodlander, in memory of his wife, Udl Bas Yehuda Tzvi. Also a month of learning by Stephanie and Fred Mortman for the Rafur Shlema of her daughter, Mazal Bat Sara Malka. Okay, today is the 29th. Okay, uh, we have uh, yesterday was a day of learning by Donald. I'm sorry, today is the 28th, right? So there's a day of learning uh, by Donald and Esther Press, in memory of his father, Moshe ben Yisrael Meir. May Shemaz have an aliyah, Krenka Rafia, Velta Yeshir, Shem Atzaliyah, and Lachol ben Yisrael, a good Gaben Shtia. Amen. 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 All right. So we're, we've been, uh, yesterday we found we were taking uh, a side uh, trip, so to speak, through the story of Daniel, okay? And then we came back to what were the Inuyim cited in the Mishnah? What was the proof, okay? And so when we come back to that issue, right, that is... Uh, what we have to uh, pick up on, okay? But I want to just, uh, wanted to point out to make a quick transition was remember at the end of the Mishnah talked about this uh, river that would come out from underneath the base Hamikdash and gradually get uh, thicker, wider, deeper, uh, and... Uh, such to the point that the Gemara went on to discuss whether one could cross it safely or whether it was because of the flow of the water, it would be dangerous, right? And so we, we saw that, and then we got to a point where um, the Gemara really uh, continued that discussion, okay? On the very bottom of 77b, yeah, it was Rabbi Pinchas in the name of Rabbi Chuna Tzpori, okay? And uh, explaining the fact that the water first came out like a grasshopper's antenna, and then it gradually got wider like the thread of warp, thread of woof, then ultimately a small jug and then it continued from there, where it said, uh, 
right? That it was uh, going to reach a certain point at the threshold of the Ulam, the threshold of the Heichal. Okay. That's then. It got bigger, stronger. David. So it got to the opening of David's house. That's euphemism for the grave of King David outside the city walls. Kevan David. Once it reached outside the walls of the city, it was like flowing river. Okay. okay, men and women that were Zav or Zava, okay, Nida, so on, after childbirth, they could immerse in that river. David, citing a pasuk from Zechariah. And that's sort of where we ended up yesterday. Okay? Now, I'm going to make a connection. Notice it said that it was going to be Nachal Shotef, a flowing river. Right? Now, remember that uh, in Bavel, there were significant amount of streams and rivers and things like that, okay? Jewish communities were often located close to those. Whereas in Eretz Israel, that was far less of the case. Okay? And so keeping that thought in mind, okay? The Gemara is going to go into this uh, issue, side issue again, in terms of crossing the water. Okay, and it's going to do so based on the fact of a concern, as we're going to get into the Gemara momentarily, that if one wore shoes, with the implication thinking back that Roman shoes were such that they could be tied, one had less fear that the current of the water would cause the shoes to come off. Whereas if one was wearing sandals, the concern is that, yes, that the flow of the water could cause the sandal to come off, and a person could then wind up carrying their sandals, and that could be problematic if they needed to cross that stream, river, lake, whatever, uh, on Shabbat or Yom Tov or things like that. Okay? So having given us that a quick introduction. Okay, we're now able to pick up on uh, 78a a little bit. Amar Rav Yosef, Mikan Remez Lanida, Shetzricha Leshev Ad Savara Bamayan. According to Rav Yosef, okay, this gives us a hint that a woman should be able to sit in water up to her neck, a, a woman that needs to be purified. Okay, now, v'leit hilchata kevate, but the law is not according to him, says the Gemara. In other words, so long as there is enough water to cover her body, okay, that should be sufficient. So the Gemara now deals with more issues pertaining to the flow of water. Tenach yom hakipurim, the lekam in al. That seems appropriate when we talk about the day of Yom Kippur, if they had to cross through water, because one had the prohibition of wearing shoes. Okay. Shabbat, de'ikam in almai. But on Shabbat, when there is no prohibition to wear shoes, okay, what happens if the shoe comes off crossing the river, or the stream, and would they be tempted to carry it and then be over on Shabbos? Amar Nechemia Chatanei Debe Nesia says Nechemia, the son-in-law of the uh, of the Nasi, right? Ana Chazite LeRabbi Ami VeRabbi Asi. I happen to see, okay, Rabbi Ami VeRabbi Asi. 
the matu urkwama the maya, that they happen to cross a pool of water. Vavruha derech malbush. And they wore it, and they did so while they were wearing shoes. Okay? Now, shouldn't they have removed the shoes first, is the implication of his question. So the Gemara answers, Tenech minau. It's acceptable for shoes. Sandal my ikalamema. But in sandals, what are you going to say? Amar Rav Rihumi. Says Rav Rihumi. Ana chazite le Ravina. Da avar derech malbush. I saw Ravina walking through water. Okay, and he was wearing sandals on his feet. Rav Ashi Amar. Sandal and Rav Ashi was of the opinion that if one is wearing sandals, right, they should not initially cross through the water. Why? Again, because they're concerned that the water will cause the sandal to come off, and therefore, perhaps the person would pick it up, being a prohibition of Shabbat. Now, Reish Galuta, Ikle Lahagronia. The Bay Rav Nata. It happened one time, says the Gemara, that the Reish Galuta himself came to the city of Hagronaya, where Rav Nachman had a base medrash, and he was going to give a shear there. Rav Ram v'chulhu Rabbanan atu lapirka. Rav Ram and all the other rabbis came to hear the Reish Galuta's lesson. Ravina lo ata. However, Ravina did not go. Lemachar, the next day, ba'e rafram la'afuke le Ravina midate de reish galuta. Ravina came to inquire, of, Rav, Rav, Rafram came to inquire why Ravina did not attend the shear of the reish galuta in order not to. Uh, Make the Reish Galuta angry with Ravina. Okay. Marle, and he said to him, "My Tamalo Ata Marla Pirka. What's the reason the master didn't come to the lecture?" Marle, he said, "Hava Kaevli Karai. My feet were uh, problematic. My feet were bothering me. Ibayalach Lamesam Masane. Maybe it's necessary for them to put on shoes." Rav, Ravina answered, Gaba de Karahava. It was the back of the foot that hurt, and so wearing shoes would have been very difficult, he says. The story continues. sandala. Maybe it was, should have been put on sandals, says Rafram. Amarle, he said to him, Urkama de Maya Hava Baorcha that there was a pool of water along the way. So Rafram answers, asks, But maybe you could have worn it, go through it wearing the sandals. Amale, lo savar lamar lahad amar rav ashi, sandal lechatchila lo. Doesn't, so Ravina says to Rafram, doesn't the master namely Raphram, hold in a situation as was stated by Rav Ashi, that to wear sandals initially is not appropriate when one has to cross, walk through the water. Okay. So the Gemara continues now back to our discussion of the prohibitions, the Inuyim connected with Yom Kippur. Tane Yehuda bar Grogorot. So Yehuda from Grogor, bar Grogorot taught the following. Asur le shev al gabe tina biyom hakipurim. It's forbidden for one to sit in, um, I could call it mud, I would call it the plaster, I would call it clay, okay, on a Yom Kippur. Ma Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. And Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi comments on that. Ubatina metapacha. 
here. We're talking here about clay that's wet, that's dripping. Amar Abai, and Abai says, Ubitofer, Almanat lahat piach. He says uh, that implies that it's dripping and it's going to drip on other things. It continues to drip. Ama Rav Yehuda. So Rav Yehuda now responds. Mutar the hitztanim beperot. But it is permitted. Okay, he said, if it's very hot, in order to cool oneself using fruit on Yom Kippur. Now, we're going to see this discussion. Rav Yehuda, mitztanein bekara. And Rav Yehuda, okay, who uh, was bothered by the heat on uh, Yom Kippur, used to cool himself by putting a squash on himself. Okay? Now, we're going to see some other interesting uh, approaches to this. I'm not sure to what degree we would say these are applicable today. Rabba mitztanen binuka. Rabba used to cool himself off by placing either an infant next to him, because the infant's body usually was cool, or uh, others want to say the yanuka was a kind of implement that had a long neck, okay, a short uh, bottom, okay, kind of jug, and therefore it kept uh, uh, liquids cool, and he would put it against his body. Ama Rav Papa, this is Rav Papa, Casa de Caspa, Male Asur. He says, Rav Papa, that a silver chalice, a silver cup that's full of cold liquid, that's forbidden. Chaser, but the silver cup by itself, shari, that's permitted. Dipachra, but a cup that's made from ceramic, idi ve'idi asur, whether it is empty or whether it is full, it is forbidden. Mishum de mishchal shache. Why? Because a ceramic cup sweats and it allows the liquid to pass through it. And in some ways it would be like bathing. Okay. Rav Amar says, Rav, kasa de kaspa. When we're talking about a silver cup, chaser nami asur, according to Rav, that the empty cup, silver cup, is also forbidden. Mishum de misriv. Why? Because that cup could fall, right? And perhaps uh, as a result, if there were any liquid in there, it would spill. Now, Zeira, Barchama, Ushpizichinin, the Rabbi Ami, the Rabbi Asi, the Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi, with the Kulhu Rabbanan, the Kezari Hama. Zeira, the son of Hama, was the host for Rav Ami, Rav Avsi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, and a number of other rabbis visiting the city of Caesarea. Amar le the Rav Yosef, berei the Rav Yeshua ben Levi. And he raised an issue with Rav Yosef, the son of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. Bar Aryeh, son of a lion, in other words, recognizing his father, Ta Ema, Lach milta ma'aliyata da hava aved avuch. I'm going to tell you a superlative idea, a superlative thing that your father used to do. What would he do? Mitpachat hayalo be'erav yom ha'kippurim. He would take a handkerchief, a cloth, on the eve of Yom Kippur, b'shore ota b'mayim, and he would soak it in water, and then he would let it dry, okay? And it would be like a dry utensil. And then the next day, he would wipe down his face, his hands, and his legs. 
Erev Tisha B'Av, Shore Otam B'Mayim. On the eve of the ninth of Av, okay, where the prohibition of bathing is the Rabbanam, okay, what would he do? He would soak the cloth in water. Lemachar Ma'avira Al Gabe Enav. And the next day, he would pass it over his eyes. And likewise, when Rab Ababar Mari came right, from Eretz Yisrael to Bovel, what did he tell them? They would bring a cloth on the eve of Tisha B'Av, right? appropriate as we starting the three weeks, right? Veshore otabamayim, he would soak it in water. Umanicha tachet me'erachotab, and he would place it under his head. Ulamachar, and the next day, mekanech panav yada v'raglav, he would the next day rub, place it over, wipe his face, hands, and legs. Be'erav yom ha'kipurim, but on Erev Yom Kippur, Mevi'in lo mitpachat, they would bring him a cloth, Vishore ota b'mayim, and he would soak it in water, V'ose ota kamin kelim neguvin, and then he would let it dry out like it would be a uh, utensil. Lemachar, and the next day, Ma'avi ra'al gabayenav, he would rub it over his eyes. Amar le Rabbi Yaakov, the Rabbi Yirmiya bar Tachlifa. And Rabbi Yaakov then said to Rabbi Yirmiya bar Tachlifa, Ipcha Amartlan, you told us the opposite. Va'otiv nach sechita. Right? And we raised a question to you about the issue of wringing it out. Right? Since Yom Kippur has the same prohibitions as Shabbat. Right? So that was the case. Now, let's go on with a new piece in the Mishnah. Okay? And a brighter, actually, that tells us a slightly different topic. Yeah. Rabbi Green, there seemed to be no concern here about the fact that Erev Tishabov, uh, like ringing out, is like doing the laundry. So I, I guess that's a rabbinic prohibition. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. That would right same okay okay right but we we know of course that the that uh, there were some that only held that uh, just of shavuah shachalbo regarding tishabav others increased it up to uh, to polish right. Mm -hmm. no, but here we're talking about erev about erev tishabav right yeah. so that. I don't know. Okay, I guess it's a minor thing compared to some other uh, mm -hmm. prohibitions. Okay. Uh, another time, it's worth bringing up the issue to what degree were there different menhagim, time of the Gemara, but eventually over the time of the uh, Rishoni, certain menhagim became the more accepted halacha. Amar Rav Menashe Bar Tachlifa, Amar Rav Amram, Amar Rabba Bar Bar Chana. Okay, we've got a long story here. Shalu at Rabbi Elazar. So they asked Rabbi Elazar the following: Zaken v'yoshev v'yeshiva. Okay, an elder, in other words, one of the sages who sits and learns Torah almost all day in the yeshiva. Right? Tzrichli told Rishut v'hatir b'chorot. Oh, a note, sorry. Must he require and gain permission in order to render firstborn in permitted or not? Now, this seems to be um, almost out of nowhere, this bright. But I'd like to suggest that it does have a connection to what we saw a little bit earlier on the Amud where we saw that the Reish Galuta himself had come to give a shiur, okay? Because it was the Reish Galuta who was the one who gave uh, the uh, 
Zakanim gave the Chachamim the imprimatur, if you will, the Heksher, to make those decisions. Okay? So let's go on as we see this. Okay, and we finish up this Amud. Ma'i kamibaya leho. What are they asking? Hachi kamibaya leho. This is what they're really trying to find out. Ki hada amar rav idi bar avin. Like that which was said by rav idi bar avin. Davar ze. Okay, this uh, thing. He nichu lahem lebein nesia. They gave it over. In other words, the authority of the nasi. Okay, or the Reish Galuta to grant this permission. Kadei lehit gader bo, in order to show some status to the uh, Reish Galuta. Srichli tol rishut, that one must gain his permission. O dilma kevan de zaken v'yoshev v'yeshiva, or perhaps because he was an elder and he learned all day. Ein sarich, maybe he doesn't need. Ahmad Rav Tzadok ben Chaluka al raglav v'amar. And Rav Tzadok ben Chaluka stood on his feet. Remember the Chachamim usually sat in the uh, Sanhedrin. Ani ra'iti at Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra. I happen to see Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra. Right? Shezakein Yoshev v'yeshivahaya. That he was an elder who sat all day to learn. Va'amad b'ma'ala, no shel zeh, and he stood, right, before the zekeno, the grandfather of this one, of the current nasi, right? In other words, it was Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya, and his grandfather was the Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, v'natal reshut l'hatir b'chorot, and he requested permission in order to permit firstborn, okay? So in other words, that was theoretically an answer to show the uh, authority of the Nasi. Amale Rabbi Abba, and Rabbi Abba then responds, Lo That wasn't the incident, he said. But this was the situation, the incident. Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra, Kohen haya, that Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra was a Kohen. Vahachi kama ba'ayale. And this was really what he was asking Rabbi. Halacha ka Rabbi Meir da'ama is the law like the view of Rabbi Meir, who says, hecha shud b'davar lo danu v'lo me'ido, that one who may be suspect of something cannot rule on it or cannot testify about it. Remember the Bechorot went to a Kohen. So is he was uh, basically uh, uh, the concern could have been was Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra no geya bedavar, right? Was he looking out simply for his own interest? Okay. O dilma halacha Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. Or perhaps the law was like a Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel da Amar. Ne'aman hu al shel chavero, ve'eno ne'aman al shel atzmo. But that he is valid, his testimony, okay, is valid in regards to a colleague, but not on his own. The Pashat lay and he answered him, halacha k'rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. That the law is like the view of Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. So the Gemara picks up now, and tells us, Ka leho. Okay, they raised another question. In other words, the students or the other colleagues, Mahu let besandal, okay, shall sha'am biyom hakipuri. Okay, since we talked about um, wearing shoes in the water, okay, on Yom Kippur or Shabbat, and we said that wearing shoes a certain kind were forbidden, right? Leather shoes particularly forbidden on Yom Kippur. What about if the shoe is made from an alternative to leather? Okay. By the way, leather was used both for sandals and uh, Roman shoes 
at that time. Okay? So what if it was made from, let's say, cork? Right? Cork is, remember, a natural fiber, right? Comes from a tree. Okay? So what about that? Right? So the Gemara goes on and tells us now. Amad Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Nachmani Al Raglav Amar. So another one of the rabbis got up to testify. Ani ra'iti et Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. I happen to have seen Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Sheyatsa besandal shel sha'am biyom hakipurim. And he went out with the sandals made from cork. Va'amin alei. And I said to him, b'ta'anit tzibur mai. What about the law of a community fast? Marley, Loshna. Said to me, it's no different. Okay? Uh, now, so with such sandals, he indicated on a communal fast day. And remember, those were days in which, if there had been drought after a certain time, they called communal fast days. Right? So it had similar laws. And so what happens? Amar Rabbi Elani, right? He says to him, "Va'amin alei," and I uh, said to him, "Right, biyom hakipurimai." What about on Yom Kippur? Amar alei lo shna. Said no different. Rav Yehuda nafek b'dehitne. Okay, we know Rav Yehuda went out with shoes made from reeds. Abaye. And Abai went out with shoes made from palm fiber. Rava, Nafek, Bidiavle. And Rava went out okay, with shoes made from reeds. Rava bar Ravhuma, Karech Sudara, Akar E Vinafek. And Rava bar Ravhuna actually would wrap a kerchief or a handkerchief around his feet and would go out. Now, Metiv Rami Bar Chama. Rami Bar Chava challenged this and raised the following objection. Okay, take the example of a person who used a leg prosthesis, a wooden prosthesis. And perhaps the wooden prosthesis was shaped in such a way so that his, the uh, part of the leg that remained could fit into the prosthesis. Okay? Meti Vrami Bar Chama raised the, the following objection. Hakitea, one who needs to have, whose leg was amputated. Yotzei Bekav Shalom. He goes out with his prosthetic leg. Divrei Rabbi Meir. That's the view of Rabbi Meir. He can use that prosthetic leg on Shabbat. The Rabbi Yossi Oser. However, Rabbi Yossi prohibits it. Vitani And the brighter was taught about that regarding the following. Vishavin Sha'asur Latseit Bo Biyom Hakipurim. But they both agree that it is prohibited to go out wearing that kind of uh, prosthetic leg on Yom Kippur. Amar Abai says, Abai Hatam, the eat baked titim. That's because there, okay, it is such that it has uh, rags, uh, shmatas attached to it. Umishum ta'anug. Why? Because then he puts the the uh, stump of the leg into the uh, prosthesis, and it provides him some comfort, okay, some pleasure. Right? Amarle Rava. So Rava says the following: Ve'i lav manahu. Okay, and let's assume for the moment <clears throat> that the prosthetic leg is not a garment. Ketitin meshave le mana. Can we say, right, that these rags are equivalent to a garment? Va'od, and furthermore, kol ta'anug, the lav min'al, 
any pleasure that's not basically that of wearing, wearing shoes. Biyom HaKippurim mi asur. On Yom Kippur day do we consider it forbidden. Vaha Rabba Barav Huna Hava Karek Sudara Akare Vanafe. And here we have the example that we just said of Rabba Bar Rav Huna that would wrap a handkerchief or a kerchief, scarf, whatever, around his feet and would go out. Va'od, and furthermore, midikatane seifa, since it's taught at the end of the Brita, im yeshlo beit kibul, if there is a receptacle in this prosthetic leg, katitim tame, then it's possible that these rags are considered impure. Miklau, the Rasha love Bidiit Lake Titin Askina because the initial part of the Brita, okay, where we're saying that there, okay, there it's uh, designed for rags, okay, but we're saying in this case where it's a prosthetic leg that's not dealing with a hollow space, right? And there, if we deal with rags, Therefore, that's not the issue, okay? And so, therefore, we can't hold by Abaye's statement. El Amar Rav, but rather Rav says as follows, Le'olam kuli oma min alhu. But according to everyone, okay, that kind of a prosthetic leg would be considered similar to a shoe. B'Shabbat, B'Hapligi. And on wearing it on Shabbos, this is what they argued about. Mar Savar Gazrinan Dilma Mishtamet Va'ate La'atuye Arba Amot. That says that there was a decree, okay, that they argued. Because one sage, namely Rabbi Yossi, says perhaps it will slip off and then one will come to carry it, right? Dalit Amos. Umar Savar Lo Gazrinan. And the other says, we don't uh, make such a decree. Now, coming back to the issue of these prohibitions, Gemara picks up with a new b'rita. Tanu Rabbanan says a b'rita. Tinakot mutarin bekulam. That small children are permitted to do all of those items that we've forbidden on Yom Kippur. Chutz mini ilat hasandal with the exception of wearing shoes. And so the Gemara naturally asks, what's so unique about wearing shoes? The Amre, because we say, and those people will say, that adults did it before the child. Okay? And we're supposed to be teaching the child about the observances. And if the adult puts it on the child, right? Right? That's not appropriate. <clears throat> right? So what happens? Hanach Nami, here too. Amri, they might say, regard to some of the other items, in Shashe, Avadule, adults, grown ups did it for them. For example, Rechitza, Vesicha. Bathing and anointing. Emar me etmo avdele. There they might say that perhaps that was done for the child the day before. So how about the following, says the Gemara? Sandal, Rami. What about wearing a sandal? Okay. Emar me etmo avdele. We might say that they put the sandal on the child the day before. Sandal lo efshar. They put a sandal on the child the day before. The may etmo of delay, that yesterday they would have done it. The Amar Shmuel, but as Shmuel says, Hai man de bai the mit am ta'ama the mituta. If somebody wants to feel or sense a situation where it's almost like the taste of death, lisayim misane veligni. Let him put on shoes and try to sleep with shoes on. Right? 
v'hamutarim lechatchin lekatani. But here the Gemara seems to be telling us that it's permitted initially from based on the Mishnah. Ela hanach de lav ravitaihu. Okay, so we say what? Okay. In other words, we're talking about items that are not required. The rabbis required this. We're in, it was a situation of the development and the growth of the child. Lo gazru baho rabbanan. That the rabbis then did not require, did not make such decrees. The Amar Abai, he says, Abai said, Amara li em, as I was once told by my mother. Okay, this was not his natural mother, remember? She died at childbirth with him, but his aunt who raised him. All right? Ravite Dinuka. Okay, it says to him, in terms of the growth, the development of the child, Maya Chamimi, warm water, Umishcha, and oil. Gadel Porta, okay, when the child grows a little more, Biata Bekutacha, one should feed him eggs and uh, Kutach. Gadal Porta, if he grows a little more, right? Tabure Mane, okay, then what do we do? Okay, we give him vessels, uh, items to break. Like that, which Rabba bought for him, right? Mane Gazize de Parchra Livne. Like, bought him various ceramic uh, items in order to break. Umit Bare Laho. And he would break them up. That was his toys. Okay? So let's go on and we'll finish the Amud, right? Okay, with a new statement from our Mishnah. Hamelech v'hakala yechatsu et pnehem. Our Mishnah said that the king and the bride could wash their faces. Matnitin mani. Our Mishnah then is according to whom? Rabbi Chananya ben Tradion. It must be according to the view of Rabbi Chananya ben Tradion, to Tanya, because we have a Mishnah that teaches. Hamelech v'hakala lo yechatsu et penehem, that the king and the bride may not wash their face. Rabbi Chananya ben Tradyan Omer, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer, in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, Hamelech v'hakala yechatsu et penehem, that the king and the bride may wash their face. Echaya, the woman who recently gave birth, Lotin ol et sandal, that she knew this mother may not wear shoes on Yom Kippur. Rabbi Chananya ben Trajon Omer, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer, and again he disagrees. Hechaya tin ol et sandal, that a new mother may wear shoes on Yom Kippur. And so the Gemara asks, Mai Tama Melech, what's the reasoning that we say that a king may wash his face on Yom Kippur? Mishum dechtiv, because it's written elsewhere, a pasuk, melech biyofyo to chazena enecha, that the people should see the king in all his glory, all his beauty. Kala maitama, what's the reasoning for the bride? Kadei shalotit gane al baala, so that she doesn't become uh, disgusting, so to speak, in the eyes of her husband. Amar rav the rabbi chia. And so Rav says to Rabbi Chia, Kala ad kama, for the bride, how long does that period exist? Amarle kitatanya, tell them as was taught in the Brita, Ein mon in tachshitin min hakala, kol shloshim yom, that we don't prevent perfumes from the bride for 30 days, implying that that same time period, okay, for washing. Now, I'm going to continue just a little bit more. Hechaya tinholet sandal. What about the new mother? It said that the, she could wear a shoes on Yom Kippur. Mishum perhaps because she might catch cold, come ill, 
And since she's weak from birth, that's a problem. Okay. Amar Shmuel, says Shmuel, imechamat sakanat akrav. Or if there's a chance that there's the danger of scorpions, mutar, then there too it's permissible to wear shoes on Yom Kippur. Okay, in other words, to keep yourself out of danger. Okay. Now, we're going to get to a new topic here. All right, so I'm going to stop there at the bottom, okay, because uh, this next statement, okay, is in a Mishnah, goes on to the uh, next Amud, which is really very short, okay, and even uh, B is not so long, so we will deal with that all tomorrow, okay?